It is so early, the moon is still up. Um, we're headed down to the beach to visit our friends. We met these guys the other day, we're about to head out for a full day on the water fishing and learn a modern take on what they've been doing for the last 500 years. Also, we gotta, we gotta go, like we gotta be quick because they're asking for us to go on board. All of their families work in the seaweed farms which are all nearby. Um, so we're so, gonna check that out as well. And they've offered to take us to their family's farm afterwards to cook up whatever we catch. All right, yeah, let's do this. Look at this boat, would ya? Mount Agung, the volcano, is popping out of the clouds. We haven't seen it for a few days. So we left the kids with Melly. The boat's just no place for the kids, uh, especially a boat this size. We obviously left the trimaran and the boat build in Vietnam to come here to Bali and explore around because we're going to be bringing the boat back here. And there aren't too many anchorages actually, so you really have to stuff out and plan your sail trips. So yeah, we're just having a look around and it's been so fun so far. We're in Nusa Lembongan, an island located southeast of Bali, Indonesia. Indonesia is actually the largest archipelago in the world to form a single state and has around 18,000 islands and islets. We cannot wait to cruise these waters real soon with our future trimaran and little family. In the meantime, Rawls and I are keen to learn from the locals and gather more knowledge about what species are deemed worthy to catch and cook in this area. Okay, we're about to go through a break in the reef. So I'm sure Marday knows where to go, but I'm keeping my eye out nonetheless. What fish are we going for? Tuna, uh, barracuda, and red snapper. Dog tooth tuna? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. <laughs> Spirits were high right about here. We couldn't have expected how the fishing trip would turn out though. Oh, I'm not allowed to fly it anymore. The sheep be over my shoulder going, good left, good left. In fact, we even thought about not continuing to film at all about halfway through the trip. Uh, and this is for reasons that would become apparent to us fairly quickly. We continued to motor out into deeper waters on this double outrigger they call a jacung. Although this one was held together by what looked like rope, we knew they can be built really strong and actually in the late 1980s there was a seafaring journey of over 1,000 nautical miles where nine crews participated, navigating from Bali to Darwin across the Timor Sea in these things with sails. Mare, what's the best fish? Uh, coral trek and snapper. Okay. Coral trout. Yeah, the big eyes. Yeah. They're that colour. Rally got the first bite. This is small. Oh, oh very small. It's a baby. Oh, a goat fish. Second fish. It's literally been 10 minutes. Is it bigger than the last one? Not much. Oh, oh okay. No, that's that's yeah, not they're, much they're, bigger. They're the coral trout. Oh, little coral trout. Oh, we're moving spot. I'm there like, I'm saying, you just let me know when, when can we drop? And he's lining all the spots up with his eyes. And he's like, now. <laughs> we weren't off to a really good start with the fishing. We started to get the feeling that the dog tooth tuna we had talked about earlier wasn't going to be on the menu. But I thought that maybe we were just getting unlucky and we'd be moving to better fishing grounds soon. Also, what we thought would be traditional fishing seemed to be entirely modernised now. Hmm. Regardless, we were really curious to hear more from Made about the vessel itself and his family history. How long have the traditional boats been around for? A uh, long time. From my father, grandfather. Before the boat like this, didn't use the engine like now. Oh, use really? the sail. He sail. Yeah, use the wind. <laughs> Sometimes he's fishing one day, not coming yet, because oh. not wind. Wow. <laughs> and do you have any kids? Yeah, two kids. They like her fishing. Good. I handed this fishing rod over to Riley for one second, and then he gets a bite. After I was claiming I was so lucky at fishing with a rod. Happy 
Dapol. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, dapol. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Seven for me and none for Elena so far. But there, I feel horrible. Like I'm quickly getting it back in. It started to get pretty awkward right about here. I noticed Riley, who was already deflated, go into one of his moods. I could feel him sink. We were throwing back our fish, despite the encouragement from our Indonesian mates, and a small bag of undersized fish was starting to build under the captain's seat. We were trying to respect the culture here and differences we had, but couldn't help feeling complicit and guilty. So far we've moved to three different spots. It's just nice to be out here to be honest. The water's so calm. I was worried I was going to get seasick today. I would love a coffee though. That's one way that this situation could be improved. Fish for us. Yeah, I thought I was going to show Riley's dog tooth tuna, but this will have to do. Congratulations. I think he's going back. Oh yeah, we Forrest used to live on a sailboat, everyone. Yeah, so... Fun fact. Yeah, like many... Um, Others, I was actually inspired by you two when I bought a um, yeah, 30 foot monohull in Sweden and over three seasons we um, yeah, went all, all around Europe and yeah, it was an interesting adventure for sure. We've heard some funny stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really like Forrest because he's been oh, thanks, hardened mate. and tempered in the fires of boat ownership and captaining and single handed sailing and all that sort of stuff. You come out the other end of that, it's really difficult. <laughs> and you spend everything that you've ever earned. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, you change for, for the better and I can see it in other, other people. I feel like it's one of those things that maybe if you knew how hard it was going to be, then you'd never do it, but it ends up being really rewarding, even though some, sometimes, yeah. You're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we've had a lot of chats about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Worth it though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I changed can my confirm life. confirm people should still chase their dreams I, a 100%, yeah. Oh, you're pulling yeah. a leg. No, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, 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 it's late. <gasps> oh, there is a fish. Good. It's tiny. Is it? Yeah. How you good? It probably took us too long to finally, politely, call it a day. We really didn't want to offend these guys, but we headed back to shore, thanked Made for the offer, but we wouldn't be joining them for lunch, where they wanted to cook us up a soup made with the fish they'd caught. It was a terribly sad moment, but I think it was understood. We planned to visit Made again tomorrow anyway, to learn more about his boat. So what do you think? Um, I'm just, I'm really devastated having seen that. I didn't know what to expect. I wanted to make a movie going out there catching a wahoo or a dolphin fish or something like that. We wanted to get the traditional low key experience. The, the idea was that we would go and watch them cook a traditional meal afterwards and we would join them and do all that sort of stuff. But I didn't feel, I just, I couldn't do it. Whatever is going on, it's not these guys' fault. It's like a they're just, complicated problem. Yeah, of, of course. I, I hope that that goes without say, but I'll say it. Um, the, those guys have done are just fishing for their family. You know, that maybe they make some money doing some charters, but they're not rolling in cash and just um, uh, obliterating their environment around them without any, with reckless disregard, you know. They're, they're just, just surviving sort of thing and that's totally fine. Every fibre of my being when I'm looking at those fish being kept is just screaming. It's so horrible for me to watch. But yeah, the guys are the guys are amazing and had incredible stories of their seafaring families and fishing going back for hundreds and hundreds of years. But um, the the actual experience for me today, I'm gonna, I, I haven't told you yet, Elena, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go vegetarian for a month. <laughs> to um to make up for that <laughs> let us know what you think about all of that in the comments just taking the kids to the park this afternoon i'm so happy that lenny's over his respiratory virus and riley is over his barley belly we 
we never take our usually good health for granted. It's the single most important thing to us. We plan to go on many more adventures and we really don't want to be limited. Athletic Greens is today's sponsor, which we'll forever be drinking and proudly representing. This formula is called AG1 and it's so easy to drink. You just mix it with water. The best way for me to describe what it tastes like is kind of like a fresh apple, but also a hint of like candy but not too sweet don't worry Riley and I have been having one scoop a day sometimes twice a day for over a year now every scoop contains 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food source ingredients it supports your immunity your gut health and immediately once you start drinking it like us you might notice a boost in energy levels it also has adaptogens pre and probiotics and antioxidants this stuff really has everything if you'd like that daily assurance that you're getting all that you need for the day you want something easy super convenient and delicious you want to forget about all the pills and start 2023 the right way give AG1 a try they're going to give you 10 travel packs for free as well as a year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 with your first purchase I'll pop the link just here massive thanks once again to Athletic Greens and for you guys for your support You would have seen our epic little buggy in the last episode, if you caught it. This thing has totally made our trip in Lembongan so far. We almost lost our drone getting these shots actually. There are these giant towers that cause enough magnetic interference to make you completely lose signal. The bright neon blue colour of our car ended up being what helped us get the drone back. He's been sick for the past four days and today's the first day he's woken up feeling good and you slept in till nine. And where are we going right now, Lenny? Pook -a -pook. We're going to Pook -a Pook, <laughs> which isn't a word, but he thinks it's funny to answer with made up words whenever I ask him questions. We're going to a cafe to get him a smoothie. What smoothie do you want? Pook -a -pook. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> and Mama needs a coffee. Lenny, how was your smoothie? <laughs> Go ahead. What it tastes like. Can I have a drink? What Lenny didn't know, but that he'd probably thank me for when he's older, there was seaweed in his smoothie. We were about to learn where it came from exactly. Uh, hello, my name is Koma. We do seaweed drawn three, three years. Yeah, yeah when yeah. I copied, we do seaweed. We take uh, this seaweed from the sea. We just plating, look for good one. And then after this, we put to the sea again. Around one month, we take again. After this, we just uh, dry. From here, we just selling. And then another people will export. But no, still, uh, tourists still uh, coming, but not many. Over a million coastal people in Indonesia rely on income from seaweed farming. Although volatile, the seaweed industry in Indonesia is booming. Demand for the seaweed extract, carrageenan, used as a gelling agent in many processed foods, has been driving Indonesia's seaweed industry to become the biggest in the world. Seaweed is super quick to grow, absorbing CO2 from the atmosphere as it does, and requires no fresh water or fertilizers to thrive. Once harvested, dried and processed, its main uses are direct food consumption, as feed for livestock or in industrial and commercial applications such as fertilizers, pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. From all over the world, it's gaining the nickname Food of the Future. Uh, seaweed for hope. Uh, when uh, Corona, if not seaweed, we cannot be. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, oh, yeah. I'm glad that was uh, there for you. Yeah, that's great. It's wow. the dry one already, dry to export. But you don't like the taste? Of yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the taste. In only a couple of hours, we'd learned one heck of a lot about seaweed and the life of a seaweed farmer. Our hope for the future was somewhat restored. I look forward to every dinner because we just find ourselves in these stunning parts of the island that we wouldn't otherwise see. This little strip of restaurants here with this view and the volcano. I will never get sick of that view. Because these parts of the world do seem to attract so many tourists, we've been meeting so many of you out and about. We're slowly making more friends here, which has been a relief for us. He's showing off. <laughs> Ah, 
<laughs> so last night at like three in the morning, I was in a really deep sleep and I woke up and I could feel something scratching at the back of my head, but I was in such a kind of deep sleep, I didn't think much of it. And then I was like, I was like what is that? And I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I don't mind a, a little head scratch every now and then. <laughs> so I was sort of like, almost like, oh, and then, into it. oh, and then I, um, I was like, oh, and shook my head and then look over and there's just this rat fell on the floor and we're oh! staring at each other. Oh, yeah. No. It was just sitting on my head. And oh, like, <laughs> what? And then this a thing, rat! I know, and I swallowed it, a big <laughs> mouse, or like a small rat. A big mouse is a rat. And then this morning I opened my bag and it fell out of the bag. No! And I was chasing, chasing him oh, around, I can't get him. God. I think I'm changing rooms. <laughs> Lucky I like head scratches, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It was decided we'd put some space in between us and the rats for now and we'd head into town to see some more and visit Marte again. Can we just take a second to appreciate this iconic landmark we haven't really mentioned yet. Mount Agung is a volcano back in Bali and is 3,031 metres high. The last eruption was in November 2019. It erupted five times, causing thousands to evacuate. Although I find this natural activity so beautiful and I'm just in awe, I have to admit that between the volcanoes and the earthquakes that happen here all the time, I've definitely definitely become more anxious than usual. Oh, and if you do make it to Lembongan, definitely come and check out this art gallery. And this is all one piece? Yeah. And it's held together just with rope? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, and same here? Is that this just... is your bamboo? This is your bamboo and this then you put bamboo. a fiberglass. Okay, yeah, yeah. They built this on the island? Yeah, we just oh, buy amazing. the material from Bali. Do they have a mold? Yeah, we have they the have mold. A, you have a mold? Yeah, yeah, my uncle make this. Oh, really? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> and have you noticed, are there are there less fish now? Yeah, now less fish, not, 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 not like before. So is it harder to make a living now? Yeah. Fishing? Yeah. It was nice to reconnect with Made after yesterday. After this week, we had a lot to think about. We really want to learn more about the potential roles we could play as individuals in helping combat overconsumption of our world's seafood supply. I'm about to say hello to my babies who are playing in Melly's room. <gasps> hey, how are you? Hey, hey Melly. Hey, do you want to come for a swim? Lenny, swim? Come on, Mama's gonna go for a swim. You mean that I already feel better? Do you feel better today? Yeah. Do I feel better? I think you do, Lenny. <coughs> your, your cough sounds much better. It was actually our last night here. The sunset was one to remember. The kids are downstairs with Melly whilst we pack up here. Woken up with the reddest eye. Look at that. I hope it's just conjunctivitis, but I didn't see the kids with any goopy eyes. It does hurt down here which is concerning. Anyway, I've woken up with a red eye, which isn't a great start to the day. We're actually heading back to mainland Bali today to go stay back at our house. We're really, really keen to get back to the trimaran and we just sent a voice message to Mark being like, hey, where are we at with all the boat jobs if Riley and I come back next week? Is there stuff for us to do? So our fingers are crossed and yes, it's been such a nice time here in Lembong and what an island. I can't wait to see more of this area. I think actually next time we come back to Indonesia, we really want to visit Lombok. That's our next island to see.
Hello, Mark. Oh, looking good, handsome. There you go. Hey, Dad. You're an hour early. <laughs> oh, are we? Well, that's all right. Um, there's only a few minutes, so we'll just get on with it. Okay. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Um, so yeah, we just wanted to know kind of what's happened since we left. Give us some updates, Mark. You know, we've done more, more um, finishing in the saloon to all the saloon undercoats. So, the... Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's lunchtime. Derek from Ocean Vault was at the factory too, and so it was decided that I absolutely had to get there. There was also more for Elena to do, so we started looking at flights for next week. Once again, I've found myself here, about to get more laser treatment. It's been over six months since my last treatment and it's so much better just using the regime, even though I can't use it full time because I'm still kind of breastfeeding here and there. I'm about to have PICO treatment, which is actually different. It's a Fraxel laser, it's not going to peel or anything, it's actually just going to break up the cells underneath my skin, the melasma cells. Uh, and make them light up, which is crazy. That was completely painless. The sounds were scary, but I hope this works. I'll see results in two weeks, apparently. This should, my melasma should lighten up. I thought that was gonna hurt like Fraxel, but it was like, couldn't feel a thing. Darwin's got a really bad fever. We just, we've given him a bunch of medicine. I know if it gets really bad, they have a, a fit. Seizure. Yeah, yeah, so. He's been sleeping all day. I'm probably not gonna sleep tonight. <laughs> no, he's, and he's got bad diarrhea as well. Mm. What we thought might just be an overnight thing turned into something pretty scary. We called the doctor around and learned that he had parasites quite badly. For now, we'd have to delay our flights to Vietnam and take good care of this poor little guy. We'll catch you all next week.